Hello and welcome back to the Alchemical Arts. This is part two of the Chromate Pigment series. Today we're going to be taking this here, which was our chrome yellow from part one, which has just been dried. I haven't ground it up or anything yet because I want to take it to different stages now, which is what this part two is all about. Today we're going to take this chrome yellow, which is currently just a neutral lead chromate and we're going to try and sort of alkalize it through the use of some of our potassium hydroxide up here and hopefully turn this into some orange slash red sort of stages. So what we're trying to do in sort of an alchemical mindset is we're reddening the work and to redden the work we need to apply heat and we need to apply salt. Through this process we will take the citronatus of lead which we have produced here in the form of chrome yellow and we will take it to its or head towards its rubedo state which is the red state. I also have here some lead acetate that I've made which I will cut to or probably include in part three um, how I made the lead acetate but essentially this is what is known as sugar of lead or the salt of satin be integral in today's process as well. Uh, firstly I've made up a solution of the lead acetate where I've just dissolved one gram of the lead acetate in 20 mils of water. I've also prepared here a warm um, one molar solution of potassium hydroxide which I'm going to add a small amount of this to the lead acetate so that I can produce uh, lead hydroxide. We should be able to precipitate out some form of orange red chromate pigment from the basified or alkalized lead solution that I'm making here. So after taking the lead acetate and adding my potassium hydroxide or my lye solution, I ended up with a white precipitate of lead hydroxide which I washed out a few times with water. I'm now going to take that, I'm going to add that to a hot solution of potassium dichromate. So about half a gram of potassium dichromate has gone into a hot solution of water, which was at about 70 odd degrees. We could probably bring it up to boiling, but at the moment I don't feel like playing with boiling dichromate solutions. And to this we're going to add our lead hydroxide and well we'll see what happens so immediately we have a yellow precipitate form and I think I may need to heat this a little more in order to get it to do the thing that we want. I thought this looked rather interesting, these sort of little puffs of, of the chrome pigment just boiling up from the bottom there. Just cooking away. Working their way towards a sort of more orange colour. So in these little beakers here I've put in a half gram of our original chrome yellow pigment and to each of the beakers I'm steadily going to add a, I'll start with the dilute solution of my potassium hydroxide or my lye solution and steadily go along and increase the strength of the lye solution to see what effect that has upon the colour. The trick here is, um, so I've made these little pastes and I'm hoping that I can get everything to sort of hydrolyze in the water there. So I'm just letting them sit for the moment. The idea is to not over agitate or stir the mixture because we want the crystal sizes to form quite large because the larger they form, the deeper the color can be. This can be problematic when taking the final pigment and trying to grind it into oil as it might end up 
crushing the crystal size and then just reducing the color to dullness but we'll see nonetheless how this works out this is more just sort of a quantifiable experiment to see how much of the lye solution and how strong it needs to be in order to obtain different shades of oranges and reds my three little samples here have been sitting for a while and although not all of the lead has dissolved into a paste form I think we'll give it a go anyway this is all experimentation for me so if it doesn't work so be it we'll just keep plugging on so for the first one I'm going to add the dilute the most dilute solution which will be a 0.25 molar solution of lye so a fairly weak lye solution and we're just adding 20 mils and then we don't want to stir it too much but we do want to get the particles to at least come in contact with the lye solution okay so for this second one we're going to put a twice as strong solution of lye in and then for the last one we'll go with a full one molar solution of lye we may need to increase the strength again and maybe make a two molar solution if this doesn't yield the results we want So after about 15-20 minutes of sitting there in the lye solution, my little samples of chrome yellow have clearly changed colour. Um, and I've just been filtering off this liquid here, which is a uh, mono potassium chromate. Um, and interestingly, and I'm not sure why this is, but the one that the solution that I added the most to doesn't seem to have gone the darkest there are sections of it that seem to have gone particularly dark or gone more to a reddy sort of orange color but it was more this middle one here which it's hard to see on the camera but this one has gone sort of a, a orangey fiery sort of orange red color which is quite interesting now I can see a few problems in the sense that my um, original little particles of chrome yellow were not sort of mush like evenly dispersed enough so I think if I was to take these and dry these and then grind them the bits of pure yellow would mix in and dilute the orangey red color but so far it's a pretty interesting result um, I'm going to probably just di rinse these with some water and we'll start having a closer look at them so after a little bit of a chaotic run towards the end of my experimenting there where I lost a lot of footage and things went a little bit crazy but I ended up with this selection of color so I'll explain what this is this here is our original sample of chrome yellow these three up the back here are the ones where I added the potassium hydroxide lye solution in various strengths and increments um, proceeding from this one here which was the weakest addition this was the middle one and this was the strongest addition this sample over here was the one where I took the lead acetate or the sugar of lead I turned it into lead hydroxide. I then took the lead hydroxide and I added it to a hot potassium dichromate solution. This ended up producing a color that I was really quite happy with actually in the end. It's not the deep oranges that I was expecting or potentially the red chrome colors that I was ex I was looking for, but it did produce this deep orange yellow sort of color that I find very similar to that of like a cadmium yellow to some degree and I find it a lot nicer than the original 
chrome yellow, which, don't get me wrong, this has its utilities, but this, for me, is the kind of yellows that I'm looking for. Um, with the three up the back here, it's interesting that on initial inspection, it looked like the middle one was going to be the darkest one, but ultimately the stronger solution did yield the deeper colour. So, as you can see, they do progress from, you know, a fairly warm orange to an even deeper orange to, again, a much deeper orange. So, if we have a closer look at this one here, in comparison to this one, there is clearly a depth in colour. I think, as a first test at playing around with taking our neutral lead chromate and bringing it through different oranges. This was reasonably successful, but my work was a little bit sloppy. So I think I'll need to go back to the drawing board and figure these things out and do a more precise attempt in the next part. Thank you for tuning in for part two of the chromate series. Hopefully in the next part I can refine my process a bit and really start to develop these colors into deeper and deeper shades of orange and if the theoretical red shade is possible, hopefully I'll get there. Thank you for watching.